Hi, this is Mark Sarazano, registered piano technician and oral piano tuner from the International Piano Technician School. And I'd like to show you how you can know for sure if your unisons are good. Now, if we want to be a really good piano tuner, we want to be considered by others as a good piano tuner, we need to be able to tune clean unisons that are stable. Because of all the things that have to do with piano tuning, that's the number one thing that everybody is going to be able to point to if it's not good. His unisons aren't good. His stability is not good. Everybody's going to be able to point that out. So you need to know if your unisons and stability are good or not. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's take, for example, uh, a unison here. We'll tune this note as a clean unison. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to find out if that's good enough. So the first thing we're going to do is open up Ocean Audio and record this unison. You might be able to say that's not good enough, but what we want to know is how good is it? We don't just want to say, oh, that's not good enough, and then just make that our blind opinion of something. We want to get confident feedback about what this is. Like, okay, you don't think it's good enough. Is it close? Or is it horrible? It's just an opinion. We've got to get away from opinion. When you're a beginner, you can't rely on your opinion because you haven't developed it. So I'm going to show you how to get very confident feedback on whether or not this unison is good or not. We're going to take this unison here and copy it and filter the first four partials. You do effects, filter, band pass, filter, and then you just use these sliders. The second partial is the octave above. Slide to the octave. Third partial. The fourth partial back to the octave. What we see here, the partials are not decaying smoothly. This one is. That one's decaying smoothly. This one, it gets quiet and then loud again. This one has a dip and this one has a dip. So what we do is we go to our spreadsheet. You can make your own spreadsheet. All you do is give a score for each one of the partials out of four. If the volume decreases and then increases by more than double, like this one, you lose a point. The fourth partial gets three. This one here, usually at the beginning, I tend to ignore those kinds of things. This one here, it gets four. So those two are gonna get four. And then this one here has got, this definitely looks like it more than doubles. It goes almost to zero and then it's coming back. So that more than doubles. So that's three and the final mark, 87.5. So this unison would pass. But you might say, wait a minute, I hear something else. What is that? And I do too. Let's find out. This is the beauty of Ocean Audio. I think that's the fifth partial. Yeah, that's really giving us a lot of problems. Eh? So if we were to listen to the fifth partial as well, we'd get like one mark off there, another half there, another half there, and another one there. So that would be one, two, three, three off, and we could do that. So that would be a four, and that was a three, and I said that was a one for the fifth partial. So we would take those marks, add them up, divide by 20, and it would fail. And that, it should fail. In my ear, it tells me it should fail, and, and this is confirming that it should fail. So now we could try and tune it again. This time I'm gonna listen to that fifth partial. That's a lot better. We teach this stuff. If you've got a fifth partial that's clean and there's partials below it that are beating, then you've got a mismatched inharmonicity with those strings. So we'll copy it five times this time. There's one. There's two.
then the fifth partial yeah that's definitely clean look at that so we only have this little B, but this is a lower partial, which we teach indicates there's definitely an inharmonicity problem here because there should not be any lower partials that are beating faster than a higher partial of 97.5. So that's how you can get some objective feedback about your unisons. No more guessing, no more opinions, no more wondering if this is good enough. You just use the bandpass filter and measure the higher partials. Now let me show you how we use Ocean Audio to help us learn and know for sure if our stability is a problem. So we're going to use the same method of measuring the unisons to measure our stability, only after three hard blows. The school, IPTS, International Piano Technician School, does not teach to use hard blows to test stability. We only use it as a teaching tool to confirm stability when we're measuring. Students use the hard blows before they send us the submissions, but we teach them how to not use hard blows and how to use other techniques so they don't damage their hearing and they don't end up being older piano technicians with damaged hearing and, and finding it hard to hear. So we're going to use the hard blows just for these submissions. Make sure before you measure that you have a clean unison. So for example, I'm pretty sure this is a clean unison, but we'll measure it just to be sure. And now three hard blows. And we'll measure that. So we want that unison after the hard blows to measure as a pure unison. This might be a clean unison, but if this isn't a clean unison, it was our stability that ruined us and destroyed our unisons and will cause us to be fired. Let's just see what's going on here. Maybe a little bit of a blip there, maybe about half off. So there you got four, four, and then maybe three and a half on the fifth partial, 97.5. After the hard blows though, what happened to our unison? So we have some fan noise that's really causing a problem here. So we'll just go with uh, the ones that we can see. So the first partial is losing half a mark. The second partial is losing a full mark. And this one has noise, but we can see a blip there. That could be half. Four is losing a half a mark, a whole mark. So one and a half, so it's 2.5. And the fifth partial we'll just ignore. Four times five, uh, four, 16, that would be 16. 78.1. It was like a 98 point something before. Now it's a 78.1. Totally failed. There's definitely a problem. And that unison, you might say to yourself, what's wrong with that unison? I've said it before, I can't say it too much. Unisons are so very important in tunings. If you want to be considered a great tuner, you need to have great unisons. Now the problem is, how do we know they're good? So I'm going to show you a surefire way for anybody, any beginners, even non-musicians, to be able to tell if the unison is right on. It's called the single string test, and it, it's developed by the simple idea that a unison should sound like a single string. So we just compare it, the unison, to that of the single string. And this brings up a concept that I've developed called internal and external comparisons. Usually, especially if you're an experienced piano tuner,
you'll tune your unison and then you'll just listen to it and say, oh, I think that sounds good. That's called an internal comparison because you're comparing what's outside your head to what's inside your head. The unison in the piano, the unison in your head. Do they sound the same? And that can work if you have a good experience and long experience of being able to tune unisons. But for beginners, this, the single string test is great because it's an external comparison where you'll play the unison and compare it to the sound of the single string. An internal comparison is an opinion. Essentially, it's an opinion, and Plato said that opinion was the lowest form of knowledge. So for beginners, the external comparisons are much more powerful because you're not making an opinion. You're just listening to things and hearing that they're the same or they're different. So if we were to take that unison and then just listen to the single string and then simply ask ourselves, are those two sounds different? The unison, the single string. Let's do it again a few times. Unison, single string, unison, single string. What we really want is the feeling that, gee, if I didn't know I was putting my mute in and taking it out, I couldn't tell if I was putting my mute in or taking it out. So we can hear a difference there. So those, those, that unison is not good. So now I'm using my experience. I'm making an opinion that that is good enough. But to be very sure, I would do the single string test. I don't think I could tell unless I knew I was putting my mute in and taking it out if that was a single string or the double string unison. So that's the single string test. I've seen beginners in a crowded exhibition hall be able to hear whether a unison is clean or not to a concert level using the single string test. This is an amazingly powerful technique. I hope it helps you.